before we start, I just want to give a quick shout out to all the people who helped make this possible, from like the play testers to the people we talked about about this game, like bouncing off ideas and stuff. This uh, quarter has been so so much fun, and it couldn't have been possible if for the people who are encouraging us. So thank you so much. Yeah, are we ready? Cool. We we seem to be ready. We seem to be good. Um, just like our code, we're also testing in prod. This uh, speech all you see is kind of like winging it. So. Uh, Hey, so when I shout you out, um, can you just stand and like wave so like people know who you are? All right, cool. All right, let's do it. What's up, everyone? Um, I'm really excited um, to show like what we got cooking on. So I hope you're ready because we are ready. Um, we're Team Pseudo Nerds. Um, that name was temporary; it's permanent because uh, we never got around to changing it. But today we are proud to present our baby, Kill Streak. Okay, so I know Jeff said that. Uh, we didn't get a game engine, but between you and me, that's not really true. Because everyone knows that the true engine powering any game is the team behind the game. So without further ado, let me introduce you the members of Team Pseudo Nerds. To kick things off, I'm Josh Chow. Um, I did a bunch of the server client networking uh, infrastructure. I also bridged the gap between a lot of the clients and the networking code. And I also drew most of the game assets. Um, my main man here, Alan McCossin, king of networking people, king of networking. Um, he squashed way more bugs than I cared to count. Uh, moving on, we got Kiki Jung. Kiki, you want to stand up for a sec? Or Wave, that's also fine. Um, she did both networking and the GUI, just absolutely amazing. I can tell you, she's definitely the kind of person you want on your side when push comes to shove. Uh, we got Michael Chen in the house. Michael worked on General Infra, helped me out some of the game assets. And who can forget, Audio Master, Clark Fan, the living legend. Before we start, I want to let you know that all the voiceovers you hear in this game are done entirely in his voice, so keep that in mind, keep that in mind, keep that in mind, yeah. And last but not least, we have Joanna Xu and Roy Guo. Guys, they are graphics gods. They are living legends. Oh my god, Joanna spent so long doing all the animations. So good, so good. Um, Roy cooked up some beautiful GUIs, smoothed out the models. Everything looks real, real nice. Um, I'm really lucky to have been able to work with them this past quarter. It's a really nice wrap up to the final quarter. But without further ado, let's talk shop. All right, anyone played League before? League, Dota of any court? Yeah, I've never played, so uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, kill Streak is a one shot, one kill version of like a League. So if you get hit once, you die. But we wanted to combine exciting, lightning fast gameplay and strategic thinking. So kill streak is divided into rounds. Um, before every round, you can buy skill upgrades and items, but uh, you can also bet on who you think is going to win the upcoming round. Ooh, just like blackjack, if you correctly bet on the right person, you uh, get it all back and then some. But if you that wrong, you lose all your investments, unfortunately. So during an actual round, you run around killing other people and gaining gold. For every three kills that you get in a row, you get a kill streak and you get some extra gold. If you kill somebody on a kill streak, you get a shutdown, you also get some extra gold. And at the end of the round, we rank everybody and we award victory points based on your rank. And at whoever has the most points after five rounds wins. It's real easy. Um, I've been rambling, sorry, you know what they say, a picture is worth a thousand words and a demo is worth a thousand pictures. So without further ado, who wants to play test our game? I see a player up there. Anybody else? Oh, in the back, I can't really see. Um, hey, what about you? You wanna play? Yeah, let's do it, let's do it. Can we get a round of applause? Yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So we come across our, yeah, 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 all right. Pick a computer. Solid, solid. You know, like, he's probably going to break our game, but, like, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah. We come to our first strategic decision. Who do you pick? And it's kind of hard because you don't really know, like, what it is. Just pick the coolest icon that you see. Yeah. Aldo will be playing on the screen for most of the time because he's real good at the game, and uh, we lose to him every single time. So, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. So the way that this works is everyone selects a character. We can only have w at most one person on each archetype. Um, there's a, some code on the back end that ensures this happens and some networking. Oh, and now we see like the how to play kind of thing, Mabob, that was drawn like two days ago. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. So some things I'd like to shout out first before we start. Um, the previous groups have done a real nice job with models. We bought all our models. Um, <laughs> all the animation you see are bought, but then because the animations are really like tricky to see, um, you'll notice that like they were really hard to do. Um, right on the bottom of the screen, you'll see your list of all your skills and the cooldowns of timers you have. We also have the leaderboard of how many people who have a certain number of kills. Um, the round number as well, how much gold, and on the top right, you also notice that like we have like just like an Overwatch, you get like a running commentary on like who's like killed who. So yeah, um, Aldo is currently playing as a mage. The mage has two skills. He has an AOE skill, area effect, meaning that like he can kill anybody within a certain distance. He also has this giant meteor that plunges down from the sky and kills. And can, ooh, we got a shutdown in the house. Okay. Aldo's on a kill streak. Come on, Aldo, leave some kills for everybody else. Yeah, so he's up against the king right now. The king has some pretty special abilities as well. The king also has an AoE, but his AoE only goes like up, down, left, and right. But the king also has a silence ability. If he activates his uh, skill, nobody can actually use their special skills for a certain period of time. That was a tricky piece of code. Um, that's the assassin right there. The assassin can go invisible. So if the assassin disappears from the screen, um, he won't be visible to the other players. And that's really, really, uh, you have to use it in a really tricky way. Um, the assassin can also temporarily sprint. Time. And now we're entering the prepare phase. You'll see some beautiful GUIs that like uh, Roy did. You can see like there's a round summary and also a global summary of the overall game. And now they have some hard, hard decisions to make. Do you spend your gold upgrading your skills? Do you spend your gold betting on other people? Or... <laughs> You can totally bet on yourself, but no, if you bet on yourself, you can't spend the gold upgrading, so you might lose the next round. It's a very risky strategy. You can also spend your gold to directly buy victory points. And now there's a really interesting relationship between what value is. So if you get enough gold, you might buy your way into victory, just like capitalism, but you know. All right, round two is coming up. We'll see what these buffs have happened. All right, I haven't talked about the, oh, that's an evade strategy. When they go like glowing white a bit, they turn invincible for a split second or so. And so it becomes a real mind game of when is this person gonna AOE? Should I evade now? Um, oh man, that trading back and forth, wow. All right, that gold that you see there is a split second of invin invincibility when they respawn. Um, that is the warrior, my personally favorite class. The warrior has two special skills as well. He's a smaller AOE, not as broken as the, uh, the mage, but he has a charge ability, meaning he bursts toward a direction. And if he kills a person while bursting, his cooldown is immediately reset, much like Genji of Overwatch. So yeah, indeed. Ooh. Awesome. All right, we're, sh we're showcasing that meteor. All right, from now on, um, I think we've explained all of the functionality to our code. Um, so I'm just gonna give some running commentary. This has always been my live stream. All right, in a round. Okay, we see them trading blows. We see him trading blows. He evades, he gets silenced. He evades, oh no. Why'd you just stand there, Aldo? Why'd you just stand there? You're gonna die. If you don't move, you're gonna die. Oh man, he gets, Okay, okay, oh man, a risky move, a risky move. Why are you not moving? Oh man, he evades. Oh, by the way, the way that this game works is that like there are some times where you don't want to win the round because if you win the round, other people who have bet on you will also get gold. So it could be a real interesting game because you want to get second place a lot of the time, not first place until the very last round. Can someone showcase the buying the point strategy? We don't have enough gold. It costs 45 gold. You only have 35. That's totally okay. All right. Oh, betting it all. Who are you? You're betting on yourself. Aldo. Okay, okay, okay. I see you there. Just a note that if he wins this round, he'll get 70 gold, which is enough for three victory points and then some for upgrades. So we'll see if he wins. All right. It's also not fair because you're not allowed to see what other people have bet on and they, they can all see that Aldo has bet on Mage. But I don't know. We'll see how it works. All right. What is this glowing uh, yellow square? This is our first instance of things that look like bugs, but are actually features. Um, this is called King of the Hill. So if you're standing in this square, every second you stand in this square, you gain one gold. And so it becomes a real incentive to try to capture this square so to let nobody else in. 
All right, we're seeing that, like, uh, I'm not sure what the assassin, oh, he just died. And he silenced, when you, kill streak. Oh, wow. No, Clark's voice. All right. Aldo's quickly capturing center territory. Oh, man, and that strat with the meteor, he juked him. But they're, they're, okay, they trade Eloise. Oh, but King's just a little bit faster, unfortunately. Assassin in that corner right there. The Assassin is a really difficult character to play. You have to play him in a very specific mindset. Oh, notice that he's staying outside. Oh, his AoE is just a little bit greater range, a little bit faster. And they spawn at the same point. And so King, they traded blows. And again, it's randomly generated. I, I promise you, it's randomly generated. Oh, man. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Cool, cool, cool. He shoots. They score. Who's in the lead? Storms is in the lead. The king is actually so so interesting stories. The king is actually the 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 worst player in the game. He's severely he's severely bad. He's really bad. When we were playtesting him, he was losing consistently. Time. And out of somewhere, like we changed some values. And yesterday when we were playtesting, suddenly the king got really good, and we don't know why. Like we don't know why. Oh, okay. Are we restarting? Is there a bug? Oh, one of our players closed the windows. That's unfortunately a bug that we really can't really like fix. So like we can um we can restart a game. That's true. That's cool. Yeah. I have no clue. Yeah. Yeah. Our our game involves a lot more clicking than other players. Just be other games. Just because you have in order to move, you have to click. And so there's a like when we're testing this game, like another pe another group came up to us like, why is there so much clicking? Click, 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 click. Sure, yeah, 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 we can do that. I've just been informed that we're uh, approaching the end of time. So while they're restarting and playing this game right here, um, I'll take some Q&A. Yeah. Uh, That's a very good question. And unfortunately, I'm not qualified to answer that question. Um, animations are all done by Graphics God. Um, uh, Joanna, um, and I can tell you she has slaved many sleepless nights over trying to get the animations done. We actually were not sure if we could get the animations done in time. That's how clutch it was. Uh, anima uh, sorry, Joanna, you want to come up here and explain how you managed to get animations done? And Mike will. So, I think basically the models that we get from the internet, they are pretty good. Mm -hmm, I would yes. say they're super pretty good. good. And uh, they come with their animations, um, which I, my job is just to load animation into the game and play it. But um, if you ask me how to do that, um, uh, I, guess, I guess it's, yeah, you have to get credit to the model makers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The animations, um, they're loaded, but then like we also, like something that, we, that Jeff talked about earlier is that there's a debugger, but when you're talking about animations, there is no debugger. It just either works or it doesn't, and you have no clue like why it doesn't work because just number scroll on the screen. That's what animations are. There's just a bunch of values of like how the node should be moving. And so you look at this, this is like a 72 versus like, is it supposed to be 149 or like 166? I have no clue. But yeah, getting to work was a miracle. Uh, another question? Yeah, what's up? How do you get the game balancing? Game balancing. Um, basically, this a lot of the balancing right now is by design. We spend a long time talking, just talking and talking and talking of this class should trump this class in this situation, and this class should trump this class in situation. When we played it for the first time, it didn't happen at all like that. Uh, Mage was severely broken. Um, also, Warrior had a bunch of bugs that made it like basically you could charge infinitely, and that was not good. And uh, like I said before, King was super broken. And it was just a, and on top of that, the balancing, there's a metagame balancing in terms of gold and how much things should cost and the ramp up of costs as well. Should we make gold uh, skills cost differently for each skill or so on and so forth? And a lot of that is just play testing. We've been play testing this game forever and ever and ever. But it's a really fun game. Any other questions? Oh, yeah. What's up? My favorite character, I think I mentioned, is Warrior because there's this super satisfaction of you get a charge, your cooldowns immediately reset, and you just kill people like in a row. It's really fun. Yeah. 
But Assassin is also um, really fun as well because like um, you'll come out of nowhere, and so like because they like are invisible and stuff. So like it's really satisfying to get a kill on Assassin because all your kills have to come from direct skill, other than like spamming an AOE. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, in the back. Uh, I can't see you guys very well, so just shout them out. The design of Betty. Oh, this was my idea, actually. Um, I have long been extremely obsessed with games that involve economy, like um, like uh, games such as like Capitalist Adventure or like games that force you to make strategic decisions. And because I'm, I'm terrible at games, I can't I can't click to save my life. Um, I have no aim, but I can't think. And so I really wanted to put a twist on like your stereotypical like MOBA game, where like. Um, Nothing set in stone until the very last moment. Like a player from the last place can just get a bunch of gold and like like snipe first place just by buying a bunch of gold. So yeah. Is there? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Clark has done like Clark has done all the voice acting. He pitches it up um, and then like he changes it out. The k -k -k kill streak is all Clark. Um, shutdowns are all Clark. Uh, the warrior, like, we were just toying around having fun with it, and then, like, we came across that one. It was like, this is perfect. There's no need to change this anymore. Yeah. Are there any other questions? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so um, the JSON, so funny story, we were using, a lot of the libraries we're using is from our CSE 124 course, which is networking. We borrowed a lot of their config files because they're easy to use and also a um, multi-threaded debugging library or like printing library and that worked really well. But the CSE 124 config library, iConfig, um, got really, really clunky to use because a lot of our configurations had to be custom so they could have nested in terms of like, oh, this skill has like this many classes and this archetype has to have these skills and so on and so forth. We're using a JSON loader strictly only for loading like a hard-coded values that we wanted to test and so on and so forth. In terms of the networking, we're not using any JSON, we're not serializing we're using a JSON. We are serializing uh, based off like our own original code. So all the the nodes, so a little bit of story about the back end. Um, basically what's happening is that the server tick is on uh, discrete time chunks. And so um, there's a server tick that goes on every like 60 ticks per second. Um, every single tick, it's serializing a uh, scene graph root tree. Um, I wrote on like, uh, it's a really complicated mess. Um, I put all the, de the dirty details on our blog, but essentially it involves a map and a tree. And then you go across and you iterate through the entire tree. Um, serializing, and we do all of this like originally hand, and then we like uh, copy to a huge, huge character buffer, and we just send it over the network every single time. And the client has to deserialize it in the correct order every single time. Yeah. We have time for one more question. I am told. Unfortunately, I don't think we'll be able to show the winning phase because um, just because of the five round restriction. But trust me, it looks really cool. Yeah. Are there any more questions? One final one. Yeah. Sorry? Yes, auto attacks. Um, we considered a lot of things. Um, this game is the pared down version of all the ideas we had. You have no idea. We wanted to do collectible items. We wanted to do more maps. We wanted to do another model. We wanted to do like so many more things. Um, one of the things we did consider was like, oh, what if we had dropped a minion who was like, in AI and moving around, what about auto attacks? The logic behind that turns out to be extremely difficult on top of like the networking and stuff. We have, don't look at our code, it's real, real dirty. It's real dirty. We use a lot of hacks to get around how like the client and the server should be talking to each other. Um, the client basically spawns a, sh uh, a ton, a ton, a boatload of, of timers. And every time that ti timer fires, it sends a packet to the server saying that like, oh, server, you should stop doing this or like so on and so forth. There's no security whatsoever. Like this zero security. Like if you, if a client goes in and changes the file a little bit, they could just break the game. And so, so I guess that's a very lengthy answer to your question. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, unfortunately, I think that's all the time we have remaining. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. This has been a great pleasure.